Hey everyone, my name is Neil and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to challenge myself by downloading a software that's new to me and that's Fusion 360. I've never used it, but it's a 3D modeling software where you can make things in order to create assemblies. So it's great for woodworking and I want to challenge myself by being able to make something by the end of the day. So like I said, I downloaded it this morning and now we're getting ready to make an entire workbench based off a build that we've already done, which is a simple workbench. Here's the link. Go ahead and watch that video if you haven't seen it. But basically from A to Z, I'm going to be taking you from 3D modeling from the very first sketch to the end product. So let's go ahead and get started. I have a new document and we're going to be making the simple workbench that I uploaded last month where I went through and I just bought um, some lumber, some plywood, and just started building. We didn't have any plans. So in order to match that workbench, I'm going to be doing the 3D design right here. And again, I only have an hour and a half to two hours on Fusion, so bear with me if it's not done right. But we're gonna try to go as quick as possible. I'm just gonna upload this video. I am not going to try to edit it. Um, so here we go. And if you see something where I'm completely making a mistake, just let me know down in the comments, but here we go. So I have a new document open and so I'm just gonna go new component call this tabletop and then um, again this is only my first day on fusion so but I have 3d model before as I mentioned in previous videos I have used Katia SolidWorks on shape uh, uh, SketchUp and solid edge always differences between them so here I'm going to sketch and the part of the problem I had on the fold up assembly video is since I was using new software, it didn't show my tree. It didn't show any of the feature windows. So I had to scrap that, but here, let's see if that works. So we're going to sketch on the top plane. So that looks like that is YZ. Or I could just click here. Okay. And um, I forgot the name of the subscriber. I apologize, but he just let me know with the video I just uploaded that there is a center rectangle. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. I'll have to flash your, uh, your username at the bottom of the screen because you saved me. I was looking for that the whole time. And then now we're just going to dimension that. I'm just going off of memory here. I am not 100% sure what the dimensions were. I'm just guessing, but I believe the tabletop was 24 by 48. So here, 24 by 48. And again, 3D modeling is not hard. It just takes practice like anything else. And um, it takes a lot of it, sadly. It takes some people hours. It takes some people weeks. It takes most people months, if not years, to learn how to fully 3D model. I've been doing it since I was in high school, so I have a fair amount of experience. But there's always something new to learn. So we're going to do the tabletop here. You could either type in, this is what you gotta love about 3D modeling software, you could either type in 0.75 for the plywood, or you can type in three divided by four, and that'll also be 0.75. And yes, I know some of you are gonna let me know that plywood is actually 23, 30 seconds or whatever, but just for simplicity, we're gonna do three quarters. And then there you go. And again, if I wanted to update or edit the feature, you could see here, everything is here, one side, three quarter. And I'm trying to give myself 45 minutes to get this done. I wanna upload it uh, within the next two hours. So it's 3.40 now. We're going to just model, whether it's right or wrong, I really don't care. And here we're going to save, we're gonna call this um, simple workbench. And then for those of you who are watching a little bit of uh, foreshadowing, that was the first simple workbench. I actually took that workbench apart and I'm making another workbench. So that video is going to be coming out soon too. We're taking one workbench. We're going to make three different workbenches from it. So here we go. We have the tabletop for that. And then we need to create the apron. So we're going to do a new component. Assemble. We'll call this uh, front back apron. And then again, 
my experience with Fusion 360 dates back to this morning at, uh, I think it was either 9.30 or 10.30, and it's uh, 3.30 now, 3.40 now. So I do not advocate for knowing what I'm doing. But here we go. I'm just, I got my feature tree on the left-hand side. You can actually see it in this video. Like I said, that's the whole reason I had to, get to scrap the first one. So now we have a feature tree. We need to create our apron and here in the video, um, I believe I did a three inch overhang. I did not like that in this video. We're only going to do a one inch overhang. So we're going to take a plane and do offset. We're going to offset off of, can we not offset off that face? Why do I see no one here? Oh, sorry. So we would need to create the plane. So active here. Again, I'm only six hours uh, into the day and knowing this software and this is only my second project. So here we're going to do a plane and we said we're going to do a one inch offset. There you go. Definitely quicker the second project around. And then we're going to activate and I just learned that you can click this little button here for activate. Then we're going to activate. Can we sketch on that plane still? Let's see. Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. All right, so this is the front back. Just for simplicity, we're going to um, model it without taking the other two by fours into account. So here I just drew a two point rectangle and then now I am going to take this. Again, I still don't understand what's the deal with this. Why for dimensioning, I have to click the point on the geometry and then the sketch. Someone let me know if I'm just doing something wrong. I want to be able to click the sketch and then the geometry or vice versa. I don't want to have to choose. But we're going to do a one inch overhang. Okay. And then same thing over here, we're going to, ah, see, by habit, I want to click on the sketch first, not the point. We're going to do a one inch overhang, and then we're going to do either a coincident There you go. Coincident, coincidence, it depends on what software you're in, uh, tomato, tomato, but here we go. So now we need to do the height of the two by four, which is here, which is uh, three and a half. It's not fully four. Okay, so we have everything should be fully defined now from everything I've learned. should be good. Okay. So we're going to finish that sketch. That's our first or second sketch. Okay. And as you can see, I'm inverted. So let me go ahead and flip this around. Still getting used to the controls. Okay. So front plane, top plane, right plane. And then now we're going to go ahead and select this profile. And go here and do a negative 1.5. Since the two by four is not fully two inches. Okay, so that's our first part of the apron. And then again, why I sketched at the origin and why I was looking for the center rectangle. Sorry. And, and again, I'm still trying to learn this feature tree down here. Okay, so that it looks like. I'm learning that this is just for what's active. So if I were to activate the entire thing, that would bring back the entire tree. I guess that's cool, a dynamic dynamic tree. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I'm used to it. I've seen it on shape before. Okay, so here, why we wanted to sketch off of the, see here how we sketch off the center origin is because now all of our mirroring features we're going to be able to do easily because we sketch off the origin. So 
if I run this, can I right click that and roll history? No, I really just want to take it to the end. Okay, so that comes in handy for here when it's time to do the mirror for our front apron to make that a back apron as well. So I'm going to go ahead and go to mirror. It's asking me for a component. I don't want to mirror the component. I just want to mirror the body because I don't have time to learn one way or the other. For 3D modeling, just do visually if it's fine and it's still parametric, I'm not going to worry about it too much. So I'm going to say do a new body. And then there we go. Again, we start at 340, if I remember correctly. And uh, it's 346. So in six real world minutes, we already have our front apron, back apron, and our tabletop. So now we are going to do the sides. And we're going to do it slightly differently. Our 2 by 4 we're going to use this for our side, uh, side apron. We're going to... Um, sketch on this face and then push it inward. So basically, and I don't know what this little sketching is, but we're going to go this way if I had to draw. And I'm holding the right button when I do something like that. Someone please let me know what the function of that is. 